So today we're gonna be installing a rear remote kit on my Kubota BX. We're gonna have to jack up the rear end and remove this right rear tire, which is why I kind of had the tractor shifted over to the left, give myself a little bit of room to work here. So I've been wanting to do this video for a while now. I actually bought the rear remote kit a couple weeks ago. But when I finally got the kit delivered to my house, I was actually missing some parts out of it. It looked like somebody had kind of stolen some parts out of it from the dealer and they never returned them. So I had to wait to get the new parts. Also, since my tractor has approximately 840 hours on it, the last time I did a hydrostatic oil change was around 400 hours. So it's definitely due for another change. Um, that's one of the reasons I want to get this kit installed on this tractor. That way, if any contaminants make it into the hydraulic fluid, we can get it flushed out with the oil change that I'm going to be doing after. Um, that won't be in this video though, but I'll see if I can get that on video for maybe the next video. So here's the kit we're working with today. Fits models BX1870, BX2670, and the BX2370. So it fits those models. If you have a Dash 1 in any of these models, um, Dash 1 meaning your ROPS is different. So on a Dash 1 model, you got a skinnier ROPS. You can see how wide mine is. Um, the ROPS on my tractor is actually the same one that they have for the backhoe models. Um, that was before they started making a different ROPS. Later on, Kubota actually came up with a Dash 1 model where they got rid of this wider ROPS and they actually went with a smaller ROPS. And the smaller ROPS actually folds over at a much lower height, where this one, it doesn't fold over all the way and it kind of hangs off uh, the back of the tractor. So that was kind of one of the updates Kubota did, but just know that's the difference. If you do have a Dash 1 model, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe the number you want is BX7322, and that should be for the Dash 1 model. Um, check with your dealer before ordering it, but I believe that is the model number you'll want. Now, like I said, when I got this kit, I was missing some components. Um, I was missing one of my hydraulic fittings, so I had to get that shipped to me, and I was also missing a couple O-rings that came with the kit. Now that I got all the parts in hand, we can finally put this thing together today. So we've got six carriage bolts with six nuts. We've got a couple regular bolts, and then here we've got one long and one short bolt that has a lock washer on it. We also have four nuts, four washers, dust boots for our four couplers. We've got a couple of stickers here, and we've got our levers themselves. So we've got, these are the main levers coming down from the hydraulic valve itself. This is the rear remote valve. This is where all your fluid is going to be flowing out of. And depending on how you move these levers, it'll push these rods in or out and activate whatever valve you want to activate. Um, these two levers right here go on the top of these main levers and they extend them out a little bit so that they can come past the fender um, where you'll be able to reach them. And then we got a rear remote plate. So this is the main mounting plate that is going to be holding your couplers themselves. Um, so that's what that's for. You can see it's nicely powder coated. And then we have the plate here where the couplers are going to be going through and they're going to be getting them out of the plate, something like this here. Um, and then lastly, we got our lines and our couplers. Um, so these are all hard piped. All these hard lines are going to be going to the couplers, which are going to be mounted to this plate right here. And then the other end of these couplers are going to be getting threaded into the main block here. And then you just got your hydraulic fittings that are going to be coming out of the block. So it looks pretty confusing. I mean, there is a lot of parts and pieces of this. So when you open the box, you might be overwhelmed, you know, just seeing everything that's in the kit. But I assure you, it's really not that complicated. So first thing we're going to do is get all of our couplers installed. I'm not going to go by exactly what the directions say, just because that's usually not how I roll. I usually kind of do whatever makes sense to me. I'll read through the directions just to get an understanding of what I'm supposed to do. And then once I have an understanding, I kind of do it my own way. Um, so the first thing I'm going to be doing is installing all these fittings right onto the block. Um, once we have the fittings installed to the block, we're going to be installing the lines to the plates here. I'm not sure how long this is going to take me to install, so let's just get right at it. All right, so looking at this picture, I'm going to go ahead and start with the easy fittings first. So we're going to go ahead and go with the straight um, couplers or adapters first. So these are just like straight um, pipe thread to a JIC fitting. We've got two of these in the kit, one here and one here. First one is going to go right on this end. And I'm just going to tighten all these by hand first, and then I'll go back through and tighten them all up with a wrench. The next fitting is going to be this elbow here. Now, there's two elbows in the kit. One has this collar on it. It's not going to be that one. It's going to be the one that's threaded on both ends, and that's going to be going right here in this far upper left port. And they want this one facing straight out. Our next fitting is going to be the short 45-degree fitting, and this one is going to be going right here. And again, they want this one facing the same direction as these other three here. Okay, so now our next two fittings, we're gonna be using these special 30 degree fittings. So they're both exactly the same. We're gonna be using both of these for this port here and this port here. Um, both of them are gonna be facing the forward direction. As you can see, these fittings have this little collar on them. So you pretty much get the fitting where you want it. So mine won't go all the way over. So you'll wanna leave it loose like this and then you just draw down this, uh, this nut on the top here and it'll drive that O-ring seal right into the block. So we're gonna leave that one forward. We're gonna grab our next one, thread that into the forward port. Again, same thing with this one. I have to back it off and tighten down my nut. So as you can see, both of these 
we've got facing forward and the rest of them are all facing right off to the left here. So now we have one more port to do. Um, that one is gonna require the elbow with the collar on it and this little adapter here, straight pipe thread to GIC fitting. It's got the O-ring on the bottom. So the O-ring goes towards the block. Get that snugged up and then we're gonna be putting on the elbow with the collar. And now this fitting is kind of special. They want us to actually leave this one loose. Um, I'm assuming because it needs to be loose for you to be able to tighten all the rest of these lines up. So every other fitting on this block, they want us to tighten fully, except for this fitting right here. And they also say that they want this fitting directed at like an angle. So if you're looking at the block flat, you can kind of see that this one is going off kind of at an angle like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up all these fittings now. You're gonna need a three quarter inch wrench for the larger fittings and an 11 16 for the smaller fittings. All right, guys, I've got all the fittings nice and tight. Just a tip, this one right here is very hard to get at. So if you're having troubles getting this tight, you can go ahead and remove this 30 degree fitting, tighten up your 45 first, and then reinstall your 30 degree fitting. So now the only other fitting we got left here is this specialized fitting that we got in the kit. Um, it requires you to put on two O-rings, which I'm not really sure why I didn't just ship them with the O-rings on them. Um, but in any event, this is gonna be getting press fitted into the side of the block here, as you can see. So with this kit, we get two O-rings. You've got one fat O-ring and one skinny O-ring. The skinnier O-ring is gonna go on your threaded end. So that's gonna go on there just like that. And then we've got this fatter O-ring. You can see how much wider it is. This is gonna be going on the smooth end with no threads. So that goes on just like that. And then if you've got the right O-ring, you should have a nice tight fit here when this slides into this hole on the block. You could hear it pop. And as long as you hear that thing snap into place, you know you got a nice tight connection there. So now we're all set to get the block mounted onto the tractor. But before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the lines. So we've got the lines here with our quick couplers, and then we have to mount them through this bracket here. So now we're at the point where we're gonna be connecting our hard lines into the bracket. So the hard lines actually thread through the bracket, and you're gonna be using these four big nuts with these four big lock washers to hold it all together. Um, as you can see on the end of these lines, they're threaded, so they will slip through the bracket, and then you're gonna put the lock washer on and then the nut. And then after that, the fitting would go on over top of that. So each one of these lines has a number in the manual. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and find the corresponding number and corresponding line and put them in the order that it shows on the diagram here. So it shows you exactly where each line should be going. As you can see here, if you're doing it correctly, all these lines should be clustered nicely together. So if they're not like that, you know you've got a line backwards. So let me go ahead and mark these lines, figure out which one goes where and start putting this together. Okay, so after looking at the instructions, this line here is line 20. So I'm gonna put a 20 on it. Our next line is line 21, and this is the top line, so I'm gonna put a T on it. So our next line is 22, and that's gonna be the third one down, so I'm just gonna put a three on it. And then we're left with one more line. I just wanna make sure that it matches up, and it does. So this is 23, and that's gonna be our last line, so I'm gonna put an L on it for last, or a B, actually, for bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead now and assemble this now that I know which lines go where. So I'm gonna start with the block here and just start putting them in from top to bottom. And once I have them all clustered in a group in the center, I'll know they're right. And we can kind of snug the fittings up a little bit and uh, we should be all set. Okay, so our first line is 21, the one we labeled as T for top. So we've got our mounting holes to the left side. Insert the number 21 line in the top, flip it over, put my lock washer on, and we're just gonna snug up the nut leaving it loose so that we can still rotate these and move them a little bit. Looks like 23 is our next line. So go ahead and grab number 23, place that in the second hole down. Okay, so the only two lines we got left are 21 and 20, and I know that 21 is the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and put 20 in the third one down here. It's a little bit of trial and error to figure out which line overlaps what. Okay, so they should go like that there. Okay, our last line is number 21. And that is gonna be the bottom line. Put that in. All right guys, so if you've done it correctly, it should look something like this here. You can see how they're all nicely tight together and how they come out at the bottom. Now, if you're not sure if you got it right, what I did was just compared it to the picture. You can see the way it looks. So just make sure that everything matches and then go to the end and make sure that the ends match as well. So now that we got this done, we can go ahead and get over to the tractor, jack it up, remove the rear tire and start installing the rest of this kit. Okay, so now we got the tractor jacked up and a jack stand underneath the back axle. I'll go ahead and rip off the lug nuts. These are three quarter inch.
Okay, so now with the back tire out of the way, you guys can see we have full access to where this hydraulic block needs to go. Um, I'm pretty sure it gets mounted to this one empty uh, hole right here on the side of the axle. And then that one small special fitting with the O-ring that pressed into the block, that should get threaded into the side of the transmission here after you remove this plug. So you can see we got good access. Um, so now what we're gonna do is come up top here by the ROPS and we're gonna get our mounting bracket all mounted up. So this is the main bracket that's gonna hold the bracket with the couplers. This is gonna be utilizing the one stud from your ROPS. So we're gonna be removing this nut right here. And as you can see, we've got a hole on the bottom of the bracket. We'll slide that over the stud and put the nut on. Um, once we've done that, we've got this little bracket here that comes off the side that helps to stabilize this. So this will be getting mounted to the side of this, which you can see the hole right here. So it gets mounted like that. And then this bracket goes on the side here where your turn signal is. And you're gonna have to drill a small hole um, right through this bracket. So what I'm gonna do first is uh, get everything mounted up, have this mounted to the plate, that way this bracket sits exactly where it needs to sit and then I'll go ahead and take the proper size drill bit and just drill right through the middle of this bracket that way I can make sure I get this hole exactly where I want it. I'll go ahead and start by removing this nut here. This is a 19 millimeter on the ROPS here. We can set this bracket right in place just like so and replace our lock washer and the nut. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and leave that nut loose so that this can pivot um, because we still have this smaller bracket to put on. So as you guys can see, this will be going just like so, coming off of that mount and getting drilled through um, your turn signal bracket here coming off the ROPS. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bolted and then I'll have it all lined up for where I need to drill my hole and can use the bracket like a guide. Okay, so in your kit, you're gonna have two bolts that don't look like the rest of the bolts. So these are gonna be two matching bolts and with them are gonna be two collared nuts. So these are the two that you're gonna be using for this bracket. Go ahead and slide that in. And then you can go ahead and put on your nut on the back side here. Okay, so the bolt end is a 12 millimeter. So I got a 12 mil wrench. And then on the nut end, it's a 13 millimeter. Got that on a quarter inch ratchet. Okay, so now that I've got this bracket flush up against the uh, turn signal bracket, I'm gonna hold it tight and tighten up the nut on the ROPS and drill my hole. Okay, that's tight. Okay, so the drill bit size that I'm using here is an 11 16 which fits perfectly in this hole and is the perfect size for this bolt right here. Okay, now I've got a little pilot hole started here for my drill bit. I'm gonna go ahead and reach around back here where this harness is for the turn signal and just kind of hold it out of the way. Just be careful you don't nick your finger and be careful that you don't nick the harness. Uh, if you wanna be safe, you could always remove the entire turn signal, um, get it out of the way so that you're not at risk of damaging the turn signal wire. Okay, so now we've got that hole drilled. Go ahead and take our second bolt here, throw it through. And I'm gonna nut mine on the back side here. Okay, so we should be all set there. You can see the bracket's nice and tight now. Definitely ain't moving anywhere. So now we got all that done. We can finally get to mounting up the hydraulic block as well as the hard steel lines and its bracket. All right guys, so now we're at the part where we're gonna be installing the valve itself. Um, so our first step is to remove this plug right here. So this plug is gonna allow us to thread in that special fitting where it's gonna mate with the block. So that is an 18 millimeter bolt. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that now. Should look just like that with a rubber O-ring on it. Now we're gonna be installing this plug right here, this adapter. So we're gonna be threading in the threaded end directly into the side of the transmission here. Just like that, we can go ahead and snug that up. It doesn't have to be overly tight. It is an O-ring seal, so. Now what they want you to do is put a little bit of grease around this O-ring here before we slide the pump in place. And then we're gonna be using a bolt to mount the pump, which will be getting bolted in right here. Now two bolts came with your kit that look alike. They both have a lock washer on them, as you can see. You're gonna be using the longer bolt that came with the kit. They didn't specify what kind of grease to put on this. I didn't wanna use regular grease because I know that regular grease can swell O-rings. So what I'm using is like a little bit of dielectric grease. It's actually the same stuff that you'll use on like brake calipers um, for the sliders and whatnot. This stuff will not swell rubber. So I'd rather use this to make sure that I don't end up swelling 
that rubber o-ring i'm also going to put just a little bit inside the block here just to make sure we don't rip that o-ring going in now we can go ahead and slide the block in place making sure the mounting tab here is on the bottom and you'll kind of feel it just pop right into place and you know you're in i'll go ahead and grab the long bolt with the lock washer on it slide that through the bottom hole here Okay, so now we got the block all mounted in place. What we need to do is remove the hydraulic delivery line. So the delivery line is this soft hydraulic hose coming across here and it gets mounted to this block right here, which is your power beyond. This is actually where we tied in for the third function. It goes up to the third function valve, then it loops back around and returns. So on some tractors, I was made aware by Tony G, a good friend of mine who actually installed this valve before I did. Some of these tractors do not have this soft line here. Some of them have a hard line. So if you have a hard line, you have to use an extra line inside the kit. So inside the kit, you get these two lines right here. This line with the big bend in it, you're gonna use no matter what. This is gonna connect to where that soft line did and it's gonna loop around back to the block. So basically that soft line is your delivery line. That delivery line is gonna be getting connected to this elbow right here. And then that's gonna be your oil flow in. And then your oil flow out is right here. So this is actually your return right here. And then that's where this line gets connected from your return and loops back around, it actually sits like this, and loops back around to where the delivery line went. And that way it can have a constant flow through it. So a lot of guys are gonna have a steel line here. Some guys will have a soft line here. I think Kubota did an update to get rid of that steel line because I think it's more flexible and less prone to breaking. So if you do have a hard line there, you will have to use this last line in the kit, this last hydraulic line right here, which I believe connects to the factory steel hard line and extends it out or something. I'm not totally sure, but just know that if you have the steel hard line on yours instead of the soft line, you have to use this extra tubing right here. And if you have the soft line like I do, you don't have to use this. And the only other pipe you're gonna have to use in the kit is this one right here. So let's go ahead and get the soft hydraulic hose disconnected. We'll get that connected to this back fitting back here. And then from there, we can go ahead and connect the new delivery hose coming off this front fitting right here and going back to the place where we just disconnected the soft line. Okay, so I got an 11 16th here. Go ahead and disconnect this soft line. Probably gonna lose a little bit of hydraulic fluid here, I'm sure. See, now the reason we don't have to use the other steel line in this kit, if you have the soft line, is because you could easily just flex this line back and connect it where you need to, which would be right here. If you have the steel hard line, you're gonna have to replace it with that other line that comes with the kit. Okay, we should be all set there. Now we're gonna be installing our return line for the delivery. Okay, so that one's nice and tight. So now that we got that done, we can go ahead and install our four main lines coming off the couplers itself, which will be getting fed through here, through this little opening right here, and getting mounted to all four of these last couplers. All right, guys, now we're at the part where we're mounting up all four hydraulic lines here that we pre-mounted to the bracket earlier. So these lines are gonna slip right on through this hole right here. So you can see this hole in the frame. You can slip all four of these down here. It's gonna be kind of a tight fit. Kind of work them through there like that. Then you're gonna go ahead and spin it rotate it like this and you'll be able to see how it gets mounted here just like that there for the mounting hardware the only thing we got left in the kit is six of these carriage bolts and six nuts so they're all identical so just go ahead and grab yourself two of them and throw the carriage bolts through the front side of the bracket here and you can go ahead and loosely nut them on the back side here you want to loosely nut them because you don't want this thing to be too tight in case you got to maneuver these lines around a little bit okay so i just got them loose you can kind of see how this thing moves around so I'm gonna leave it just like that. Okay, so this is what it should look like. So now we can go ahead and get back down to fender well and make our last four connections. Okay guys, now we're underneath. You can see how all our lines are where they need to be. So we got this one goes here. We've got this one here on that one fitting we left loose here. And we've got the two other lines, one in the back and one here on those 30 degree fittings. One thing I did mess up on, I'll show you guys real quick, is as I got under here, I seen it wasn't lining up. I actually showed you guys the wrong hole. So on your link here, coming down for your three point hitch, you wanna be on the left side of this link right here. So I went through here because that was the obvious hole to me. It was the largest one. Once I got down there and seen they weren't lining up and that they needed to go over more, I quickly realized that they needed to be on the other side of this link here. So I just pulled my dipstick real quick and pushed it through just like you guys see me do. So I didn't record it all over again, but it was the exact same steps I just showed you guys. Only instead of going through this hole, you're gonna go through this hole. Pull out your dipstick to make it a little bit easier. Once you get your lines through there, you can go ahead and push your dipstick back in. All right guys, so I got all the caps removed. I'm gonna get the back lines done first. That way I can get to them to tighten them. And once I get the back lines on, we'll go ahead and get the front ones done. Okay, so we got this back one tight. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this front one installed.
Okay, now that we've got the hard lines hooked up to these two 30 degree fittings, I'm gonna go ahead and do this 90 back here that we left loose, which I actually just took out of the way because it was easier to access. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one done now since it's in the back. Pivot it to where you need to to get this line connected here. Slide your collar on there and thread it in place. So now when I tighten this collar, I also gotta tighten this collar up at the end. And then the last line we got is this one right here, which goes right there. Okay, that's tight. I'll go ahead and tighten up the collar on that elbow. And that line should be all set. Okay, and that's it. Now that that's all done, we can go back up top and finish tightening the carriage bolts that hold the mounting bracket and throw our hydraulic fittings on. Once that's done, we can go ahead and get the levers installed and then we can run them up to the fender and put our handles on and we should be all set. Okay, so now we got all of our lines tight and secured down below. We can go ahead and finish tightening up these collars here. Okay, these big nuts here, these are a seven eighths. Okay, so now we've got our bracket tight and our hard lines tight. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount our hydraulic couplers. But before we do, I'm gonna go ahead and use some of this hydraulic sealer, thread sealant. I'm gonna throw a little bit on each one of these fittings. You really shouldn't use Teflon tape if you can help it, because the Teflon can get into the system and it can clog all of your hydraulic filters up and it can just wreak havoc on the entire system. Always try to use a hydraulic thread paste. This stuff works really good. I've never had a leak yet using this stuff. I think I picked this stuff up at Napa. Part number for this, number 56521, and it's made by Permatex. Okay, so now we can go ahead and slide our dust cap over the threads and start threading on all of our fittings. You're gonna want a 13 16 wrench to tighten these up. All right guys, so once you get everything all mounted in place, this is what it should look like. You got our main jam nuts here, our nuts holding the lines to the bracket. Lines come down and you can see just how tight it is. It's very, very tight, but I assure you it doesn't hit. Some crazy engineering had to go into this product because it's just amazing how tight these clearances are and how they were able to think about all this stuff and design all this, it's just beyond me. These lines fall down through here. And as you guys already seen, makes the final connections down through here at the block. So now that that's done, the only thing left in your guys' kits should be your main two control levers, um, the two lever extensions that come up through the fender. And you've got this little hinge or bracket right here. This bracket comes through these two arms, kind of like that. And then this gets mounted to the frame. And then you've got your two levers that can operate independently back and forth. Lastly, we've got our decals and our two covers that go over the top of the handles. And as far as hardware goes, we've got four carriage bolts left with four nuts. And that is for mounting these two extensions to the control arms here. And then we've got one last bolt here that mounts the hinge to the frame. All right, guys, so we're back under the tractor. I've got the two control levers here with the bracket slid through them. You can see the levers are pointing towards the outside of the fender. And we've got the bracket with the mount. You can see where the hole goes through. Um, that mount is towards the transmission. So that's the way this goes through these two levers. Go ahead and slip this in here. And where this is going, just so you guys know, you can see this pin right here. This pin drops through this hole right here. And then this mounting tab right here goes right here. And another thing is you wanna make sure you drop these forks right in between on um, these pins right here on the control valve. It's probably gonna be easier to put this bracket in after. So let me just take it out of here. And yeah, we can put these in one at a time. Yeah, that's much easier. Now we can go ahead and put our bracket in. So if I push up on this fuel tank, I'm able to get this bracket to slowly work its way in. And I think I'm in all the way. I just gotta seat it in this hole in the back here that I showed you guys earlier. There we go. Okay, so as you guys can see, this bracket slides through. And way back here is where that pin slides into that little dowel, that little hole that was in the block there. So that slides through there. And then over here is our mounting tab, you can see right there. Um, so that's where we're gonna drop that bolt in place, tighten it up, and we should be all set. Okay, that's tight. Now what we're gonna do is add the extensions to the levers. So those levers are up here, you can see those four holes up there. 
that's where we need to use the remaining four carriage bolts to install the two handle extensions that'll come up through the fender. All right guys, that really wasn't difficult at all. I just couldn't really get you guys in the right spot. Pretty self-explanatory. You just got two levers here that you're connecting to the two main levers. Um, you want your carriage bolts both facing outward. That way they don't rub against each other. So you can see how they're both facing away from each other on each side. Tighten them up and you're all set. And this is what it looks like on the top side. So we still have to add our little handles on the top and our decal. You can see how that works. It's nice and firm. And then here's the other one. Feels really, really smooth. Really happy with the way that turned out. Um, so now we can go ahead and put our little rubber boots on here, or handles, and then we can get our decal in place. There we go. Much better. Okay, now we can get our decal put on. Try my best to get it straight, because if it's not straight, it'll drive me absolutely nuts. All right, there's the final product. You can see how nice and clean that looks. Super, super stoked about it. I've been wanting this rear remote kit since I bought the tractor. Um, just been kind of biding my time. There are so many other things I wanted to get first that I just never really got around to it. So I'm super stoked that it's installed now. So let's go ahead and start this thing up and give it a test, make sure we ain't got no leaks. Before we do that, we gotta hook something up to the rear. Um, so I have a cylinder in mind that'll work perfectly for that that I actually had back there at one point. Um, so let's go get that. We'll throw it on and we'll test this thing out before we put the tire back on. All right, so you guys might remember this. This is my old um, tree shear that I built that, um, you know, failed. <laughs> failed within my first use because it bent. This is one of the first big projects I did on my channel, big welding projects. Um, I had a lot of fun doing it. I definitely learned a lot. But um, yeah, this piece of pipe right here slides into this piece of pipe and it's got a bolt that goes through it so I can leave it flat or turn it this way to limb trees. Um, everything, you know, worked flawless on it except I didn't build it strong enough. As you can see, this A-frame got bent. Um, even this entire main structure right here got bent a little bit. I was always going to rebuild it and uh, just kind of restructure the thing, go through it and beef it back up. I just never got around to it. Um, if this is something you guys want to see me get back into and figure out a way to fix this, um, you know, leave a comment below and I'll see if I can get back into it. I used to have this cylinder on my three-point hitch and I had it at first hooked up to my third function valve before I had a grapple. Um, that's why this hose is so long. And then um, basically once I decided to make this tree shear, I ripped it off of my three-point hitch and used the cylinder as a tree shear cylinder. Now we can take it back off the tree shear, put it back on a three-point hitch since I actually have a rear remote set up where it's not going to be interfering with my grapple and whatnot so I don't have to use it on my third function. Because that was the main reason I got rid of it. Once I was getting a grapple, I figured there was no reason to have this back there unless I had rear remotes because I wasn't gonna continue to switch the hoses back and forth every time I wanted to use this versus a grapple. So now we could throw it on there permanently, hook it up to the rear remotes, and I should be all set. Okay, so I've got the hydraulic top link all installed now. Like I said, I just gotta get these hoses cut. I'll stop down at Napa, get them cut to like two feet instead of the seven feet that they're at now. We've got them hooked up into the bottom two ports of the rear remote kit. So let's go ahead and start this thing up, give it a shot, and make sure we ain't got no leaks. All right guys, so as you've seen, it worked perfectly. Um, right away, it didn't even really have any air in the system, which I was surprised about. Um, I checked over all the hydraulic fittings. We've got no leaks there. Check down here, everything is bone dry. Thank God, because it would be pretty tough to get at these. So yeah, everything's nice and clean, really happy. Super stoked about this install. I'm gonna go ahead and slap this back tire back on and uh, get my shed clean back up, get my tools put away. And as soon as that's done, I'll get right back with you guys to close out the video. All right guys, well there it is all back together. Uh, everything turned out really good. I'm really impressed with Kubota, the way they designed this kit. It couldn't have been easy. Like, I don't know how they did it. 
um, to get those tight of tolerances and get those perfect bends and be able to sell it in a kit that you know just some homeowner can do um, you know on the side as a side project I think that's really cool um, having the spot available over here having it already thought out and um, having the spot for everything to come through with the handles um, I just think it's really impressive really happy with it um, this fender looks much better now without you know an empty slot being here I'm super stoked about it really happy overall no leaks I can't wait to uh, use it some more um, I'll be looking for some rear implements now that I can use with these couplers and I'm thinking about even getting a tilt cylinder so I could have a top and tilt. I got to run a nap at some point this weekend. I'll get these hoses shortened up because um, right now they're laying on the floor so I'll just have to wrap them up for now. Um, but at least it's all done and it's, it's usable again. So um, yeah, really happy with it. If you guys are willing to do this on your own, just so you guys can see here, this is all the tools that I use for this job. I mean, so you guys can see, it's it's a very simple job to do. I used four wrenches, a pair of flyers, uh, half inch drive, three inch drive, quarter inch drive. I used like three, four different sockets. Um, one ratchet wrench to get those um, little handles put on underneath the fender. It was just easier using a ratchet wrench. And then obviously you want an impact gun or something to take off the lug nuts with, with a three quarter inch uh, socket. So um, very simple kit to install. One last thing I forgot to do was add the sticker. Forgot to show you guys, this is where it goes. Just in case you guys are curious, the sticker goes right here. Um, but aside from that, everything's done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, Hopefully this video wasn't too long. Hopefully it was informative. If you guys watch this entire video and you're still a little bit confused, another great install video to look at is Who's Their Helper. Um, Jason there, he has that channel and he has done a rear remote install on his Kubota BX as well. Um, I think he's got a 2370. So if you guys are still confused by the end of this video, go check his out. He's got some great information in his as well. Um, wanted to give the guy a shout out. He's always on Facebook and on the Facebook groups. Um, he's always posting my videos to guys that are, you know, wanting to help working on the Kubota BX. He's always posting links to my videos and stuff, and I really appreciate that. So the least I could do is give the guy a shout out. Um, I'm just not on the groups enough to, you know, to catch everybody's questions, unfortunately. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, and as always, we'll see you guys in the next one.